This is ABC Customer Request Tracker, and it's an example application you can find in the App Exchange. Uh, what it does is it allows you to take in requests from outside of QuickBase users, and you can use your own custom forms to add records. Let's click on this Internet Users Dashboard, which navigates us to another QuickBase page. And here's an example of a form that you might have created yourselves using the how to create your own custom web form. And uh, there's directions on how to make that happen, and you can add your own look and feel if you wish to. But if you want to use a QuickBase form, there's a standard form, and then there's a modified one. I'm going to just show you what the standard form looks like. Uh, and you can see it up at the top. It's a regular new record, and it's using a specific form, DFID 11, which only has a, has a certain number of um, uh, fields on it. And notice you've got a save and you have a submit. I've had to add the submit button because what I'm about to show you when I step back and choose the other option here is uh, we've added this in iframe version equals 20, which, by the way, you can change. Let's say this is 500. Uh, it puts us 500 pixels from the left border here. But there's no save button here. And we've had to add a formula URL field. And it's important to note that this has to be a formula URL field. Um, and what does it do when you hit submit? Well, if I right click this and edit the field properties, it's actually going to a thank you page inside this application. And this, of course, can go to any place that you'd like it to go. But if you want to host a thank you page or a redirection, um, you can actually use this. Now, it's, it's important to note a couple things about this save button that's happening here. Um, it's actually, it looks like a save button. Really, it's a, um, a, a diversion. It's actually saying, well, go someplace else. Well, how do you get it to save? Well, it's really important that you turn on this capability to save the parent record automatically when adding a child record. Uh, you definitely um, do not want to turn on open target new window. It has to be a formula URL field. Uh, rich text fields do not invoke the save function. So there's just a couple of caveats if you want to use this technique. So let's go back to the, um, to the form here and add a record. So we're going to add a marketing for this. And the request is send a um, copy. And we can put details in here, file attachments. And I'm going to just put um, a couple of fields in here to fill out and satisfy this. Now, because this is a form that you're going to be using that's open to the ev everyone on the internet, you it's kind of a good practice to figure out, well, who are the people that are submitting this? So asking for three different pieces of information is great. You could have a customer ID number. Uh, as long as the customer knows it, that's fine. But you have to have some way of knowing how to follow up with these people. I'm going to click on Submit. And notice it saved it and then went to that page. And this is that link to that thank you page. So I'm going to come back here to the dashboard. And we'll scroll down. And you can see that the Send a Copy has, has come in here. Uh, let's edit this record. Now, this is a different version of the form, as you, and of course, we have the header up here too, because we're internally acting like administrators here. And we saw the record here, Kirk Tracy at Gmail. And, and notice it found a record here. How did it find all this information and for Kirk Tracy? We didn't put in here ABC Paramotors, and none of these fields were also um, exposed. But what we can do is uh, take a look at how we link this up to, and I'm going to click on this link here, ABC Paramotors. Now we've moved from the request over here. So they're only submitting into this request table. And you'll notice down below here that the email address is the uh, field here known, and it's the key field of this customer record. And, and so, um, and if you looked at the relationship that ties the two together, you'll see that uh, there is a uh, key field on the left, which is the email address. And there's a field called related customer over here, um, which is going to, um, if I click in here, it's just a regular uh, form. So how do we get that to happen? 
So let's go back and look at the request. And uh, if we get on the form itself, I want to show you this, customize this form and look at the dynamic form rules. So it says when the email is not equal to blank, change the related customer value to the value in email. That's really taking what they've given us and putting it into the related customer so that they'll link up. And, uh, and you can see here, when the email is not blank, change the related value to the value that they gave us so that in case it links, it does. Okay, so that's using a form rule to make that happen. And uh, so once again, uh, what we're doing is, is that we're going to actually use QuickBase as a website to host a form and it's either a custom form or we're going to use this version and notice up above an iframe version if I took this out of the picture deleted it we have the big form but we're still using dfid 11 I'm going to take that out and now we're looking at the the whole form and the purpose of this is exercise is to show you how you can use QuickBase to take in information. Now, inside the request table, there is an alternate version of the form that I use strictly for internet purposes here, right here. And if you click and view it, you'll see that uh, the fields that are inside here are reduced from that of the main form. So I've just taken, I've copied the main form and then I got rid of all the extra. Um, you can see the last button is that submit button we have. Very basic form. I, that's the version I wanted to uh, share with everyone on the internet. Um, built also in here are some email notifications. I'm gonna click on the settings and come over to the email notifications and you'll see there are three of them. So the first one, um, it's a new request auto response and it says, thank you very much. And it's sent to the, it's an open email notification that says uh, to the email that uh, was submitted into the form so that they have, thank you very much. Um, also, when the status of this it changes to closed, it also re goes back out and tells the um, customer or person that submitted the form that their ticket is closed. And there's another one in here that says, well, if the assigned to person's name changes, fire off a notification to that assigned person and uh, let them know um, that they have a ticket to work on. So th these are three different types of workflows. And again, this is ABC Customer Request Tracker. It's meant as an example use case. Uh, look forward to uh, talking with you about these things. We cover subjects like this in our daily webinars Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. East Coast time. You can find that at quickbase.com webinars. Thanks.